Hello, I'm Gary YouTube, joined by yet another Gary YouTube, and we're back to do some more Gary YouTubing, this time in the form of a tier list where we're going to rank every single Rock WrestleMania match before WrestleMania 40. Yes, and I'm excited because, because he's had a collection of very high profile WrestleMania matches. But how good are they? It's a smorgasbord of different kinds of wrestling matches. All the shh shh shh. Hit the titles, please, Joel. Uh-huh. Just in case you haven't been here before, we're going to put these Rock WrestleMania matches into a tier list ranking from the best, or ranging from the best, to lovely, 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 to all right, to just about bearable. And then you want to avoid that bloody bin, don't you? You do, that you do. final bin. Oh, my God. He is the final bin, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The who, Brahma bin. The Brahma bin. <laughs> Other nicknames are available. But at WrestleMania 13 for the Intercontinental title, Rocky Maivia, as he was known back then, defeated the Sultan, who was accompanied by the Iron Sheik and Bob Backlund. Double heel managers. Because apparently this was done to get an attempt to get The Rock cheered, or Rocky Maivia cheered, but it still didn't work, having two of the biggest arseholes in professional wrestling history by uh, the Sultan's side. Yes, uh, I watched this match about half an hour ago because it's the one I'm least familiar with. I thought I'd refresh my memory. Just spit out what you want to say. All right. I go. Thought, before you've done your... Yeah, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, go. Um, there's, there's, it's weird. It's definitely... You can tell it's structured to do that, to get the rock over. Um, I'm not sure if it works. It didn't. Sheik's beating him down and the managers are distracting the ref and all that sort of stuff. There's a moment if you go to... For all the viewers, if you go to 30 minutes exactly in the uh, network time uh, time frame uh, and then wait about four seconds the rock's firing up and he does like like his punches still have snap mm. but he's not as cool yeah and he goes like oh what and like does a 360 and then it's proper one. mid 90s wf isn't it before it's, it got yeah, cool it's not it doesn't work with very well uh, but there was a long plot and beat down from the Sultan, as you would come to expect, which got a decent reaction because the, the diving headbutt, which was good from him, I guess. Uh, there was a long chin lock and boring chance start, which is something I picked up on there. Uh, there was a double down spot as well, because obviously when you try to get someone over as a baby face, what you do is have them do really boring moves like a chin lock mm -hmm. and a double down thing. And oh, yes, that came off a big double clothesline, though. It wasn't <sighs> electrifying. Sadly. It wasn't at all. Uh, it looked like the Sultan was going to get the job done when he, he hit a super kick and a pile driver, but the Rock or Rocky Man manages to counter another move and then he wins it with a roll-up uh, but the fans weren't buying it at all were they no and it, and it didn't help that obviously he was very inexperienced at the time but it didn't help that the rock was clearly in this match just watching it just anyone could tell that the sultan was just a better wrestler at this point yeah he hits a lovely pile driver at one point yeah like, what rikishi look at him go and a, and a splash and it's very Uso-esque. You yeah. can tell where they got it from. To be fair, the Rocky does do a nice crossbody off the top himself. Oh, he flies. Oh, he flies. Yeah, he does fly. As a match, though, or I should say as well, after the final bell happens, then the, the, the heels come in the ring, they beat down Rocky Maivia, which brings out uh, Dwayne's father. His dad. The final, final, final boss. Uh, and they <laughs> just beat down the heels for a nice moment for the pair of them. But the, once again, the crowd just weren't buying it. It's, again, another moment to look out for when Rocky Johnson is helping save his son. Uh, he does a few big right hands, fair enough. Then jabs with, and his feet are flying. He's like, yeah, that's what he did. And then bang! I know, but he's wearing, I think, like dress, like trousers. It looks even better. <laughs> in there. And then him and Rock do a stereo, flailing arm taunt into a right hand. And then they, and then they take turns body slamming the Iron Sheik. And it's like WrestleMania three. Oh, it's a bit fantastic. It's not fantastic. No, it, it's it's fine. Is what it is. I think it's just all right. Oh, I was going to go just about bearable. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go top of bearable. The reason that I'm down, I want to downgrade it from all right to just bearable is because if you're trying to get someone over, I don't think it helps that their dad has to save them. Yeah. That's quite, yeah. So I'll, I'll, are you all right with bearable? Oh, yeah. Top of bearable for me. I don't think it's any more outra offensive than that. Mm. Is offensive the right word? It's just a fine match that, where it, what they try to do didn't happen. That's all it is, isn't it, it? It doesn't help that it came on the same show as one of the grittiest, realest matches in WrestleMania history. Yeah. Undertaker versus Sid. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. see what he's done there. On to WrestleMania 14 we go once again for the Intercontinental title. The Rock defeats Ken Shamrock by disqualification in a match that lasted four minutes and 49 seconds. This is the WrestleMania where Rock spoke to Jennifer Flowers about a, a potential presidential campaign and there's hung juries mentioned. And if you smell what the Rock is cooking, if you smell what he's cooking that's where that line makes its debut oh. uh, just in the build up to this Wrestlemania just to set the scene a little bit more for this one he got injured in the aftermath of Wrestlemania 
2013. Then he went away for a bit. Then he came back as part of the nation. Then he embraced the die, rocky die stuff and the heel stuff that was getting put on him, even though he was a baby face at the time I was supposed to be. And then by the time this match came around, he was slowly taking the power away in the nation from Big Farouk. Mm-hmm. Farouk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, if The Rock got disqual- disqualified in this match, he lost the match as well. So he couldn't get a chair in the ring and do stuff. Because that was the big part of the build for this match is that when you've seen that uh, chair shot from The Rock to Ken Shamrock yeah. and Ken flops down on his knees to, the, to his back, that's in the build of this match up here. So that's why that stipulation was brought in. The, the build's so much better than the match. Yes. Yes, it is. It goes the opposite way around how it should be. It's just too short, isn't mm-hmm. it? Like the notes I've got written down mm-hmm. here, that there's big clotheslines early on. The Rock gives a people's elbow before it was popular. So it's weird to see that move not get a, like much of a reaction from the crowd. Uh, then there's a ref down spot. Uh, the, rock, the Rock goes to deliver another massive chair shot to Ken's head. Uh, of course, just going off the back of the one we already saw. And then Ken kicks out of the pinfall that happens after that chair shot. He fights back and wins with an angle lock. And that's it. After the bell, Farouk comes down as Ken is still beating down the Rock. But then Farouk turns his back on the rock mm. Ooh. there's too much bollocks here in yes, such a is. short space of time so who wins in the end then so the decision gets reversed because right. Ken then starts beating mm. down all the referees none of which we've seen before so they're clearly just you know yeah, yeah. St- standing to, to fill the role of bumping boys yes. uh, so because th- he starts doing that the referee reverses the call and the rock gets the title let's see what I think once the final bells rang there's no reverse in the decision then. No. No, it's not been, a wrestling word. It's set in stone. Um, but the streak's alive. The rock streak. Two and oh. Yep. Um, it's not, it's not great, is it? It's it's I think it's maybe it's got a bit more to enjoy than the WrestleMania 13 one, mm. but just as a, a thing to to you know, supple on the old palette, it doesn't quite fit right for me. The intensity's there more than it was in his Mania debut, definitely, but yeah, the ending's full of bollocks and, yeah. and I don't like the reversing of the decision so it's between the two bottom tiers for me yeah I would put it above above Wrestlemania 13 but in the same tier okay just because there is so much bollocks and such a such a short space of time mm-hmm. I can't I'm just, I feel like I'm Dutch today <laughs> hello such a short space of time um, but yeah it's just when you, you see The Rock as a heel as he was then and Ken Shamrock is the you know the maddest the baddest man on the planet mm-hmm. whatever he was back then uh, smacking his head on the on the ring steps and what you just want to see Ken batter him yeah and he did for a portion but not enough Fair enough, then. It does survive the bin. It does, yes, just about. Fair enough. WrestleMania 15, business is about to pick up back out. Jim Ross probably said here, when the world title's on the line, of course, no disqualifica- disqualification mm. match. Special referee, kind of Mankind, but not really. Uh, as we saw earlier in the night, Mankind took on the big show for the right to be the special guest ref in this one. But then there's an attack, and the Mankind's at the hospital. Big Show's been arrested or something like that. I can't quite remember what the storyline was. It was very, was. very Russo. It was. Very twists and turns that didn't really need to be there just for the sake of it. So Vince comes down and wants to be the referee yeah. and then Shawn Michaels who's the commissioner comes down and says there's only one man who can make a referee and that's me so get out of here Vince. But I think he goes like I might let you come back down later in the match or something like that. <laughs> he sort of spoils what happens at the end yeah. of Shawn Michaels uh, but this is much better. Yes it is. It's um, Even though Russo mania was in full effect the magic of the Attitude Era was alive. It was. Um, and you can't replicate the, the sort of the intensity that Rock and Austin had, even though this was the first example of it at WrestleMania, it, it was definitely there. It's my least favorite of the trilogy. Oh probably, yeah, I agree with that. But it's still enjoyable, definitely. It's got all the hallmarks of the Attitude Era main event. There's a brawl up the ramp. There's table spots on the on the announce table, the Spanish announce table in particular. Cables being wrapped round necks. None of this a disqualification, but of course this is no disqualification match. Why I brought that up, I don't know. Multiple referees are down there. Vince then comes down after trying to insert himself at the start, as I mentioned earlier. Foley's then back from the hospital. He's he can never be killed, Mick Foley. No, no. Um, it's <clears throat> the best match on WrestleMania 15, I would say, but that's not saying too much because in terms of you know in ring quality it feels like the only one that i mean this could be massively wrong but it feels like the only one that would have got any length of time it yeah. felt like there was a million matches and they all lasted about three minutes that was our two year though wasn't it yeah that's it how was. it was yeah, but this one lasted nearly 17 minutes maybe there was a bit too many swerve bros but this was a, just a sign of the times wasn't it this is what they did back then and it was, I, it was it's definitely the best one we've, we've talked about so far yeah and, and then this 1999 was kind of the the last year that that the attitude era was this wacky and then obviously mm. russo would leave and things would calm down a bit in 2000 which is widely regarded as an amazing year for wwe but this was i don't think that drags this match down too much because it fit the times and it and it was like a fun mess yeah i, I think a better example of this sort of match might be the one where austin comes out at backlash to save the rock mm-hmm. where it's still a big like schmoz but this was still 
I think lovely, lovely, lovely. I think the bottom are lovely, lovely. Yes, yeah. By the yes. time we get to the end of the tier, that's where it could be. Mm. That was the first match that Rock wrestled shirtless for a while. Really? After his breast reduction surgery. Yes. I'm not going to judge a man for doing that. Not me neither. Enough. I no, probably no. need it myself. <laughs> anyway, WrestleMania 2000, of course, it was the four-way. Every muck man in a corner. Bloody hell. Dysfunctional mania. Uh, the Rock had Vince in his corner, of course, uh, for this four-way elimination match, which started with punchy brawls. Then Foley and Show repeat their back spot. You know, when Foley's on the back and Big Show flows yeah. himself back uh, from last year's of the, of the previous WrestleMania. Uh, but Big Show is the first one out of there because it was such a weird time for the Big Show in the early going of his of his tenure in Dury. Yeah, he, he came... cost Vince that match in the cage match. Yes. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, by accident. He threw Austin too in hard cage wall, and he yeah. slammed through the cage, yeah. And then he's just sort of like, he's nothing all of a sudden. Yeah, he went from bringing in this huge, like, oh, he wanted WCW's biggest guy, literally their biggest guy. And then and then he, he must have fallen out of favour fast. Mm. They gave him a title run in 99 as well. Yeah. And then this is off the back of that and it's just all downhill for a while from they, here. They try to keep him strong in this elimination because everyone just gangs up on him and then eventually the rock hits the rock bottom to get him out of there. But he's the first one out of there in a match that had Foley in. Foley was retired. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he lied to everyone and came back. Um, and, and Big Show had Shane in his corner. I don't know how he's the first one out with the best in the world. Though. Oh, he wasn't the best in the world back no. then. He was just a lovely boy who liked doing silly things. Jumping high. Yes. yes. That's how the Shane I like to remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Foley and Triple H then start working together, which is unthinkable mm. due to what they'd done a few months before. But then Triple H, of course, is an arsehole because this is this is the year 2000 and he eliminates Foley next. Then we have Triple H and The Rock just having a classic attitude here at Brawl once again. Um, he's doing pile drivers on the steel steps, uh, the suplexes through the announce tables, the brawls up the ramp. Shane's back down there to do some wrestling with his dad. Yeah. But this is before Shane took himself way too seriously. So it's just funny. It's like two lads down the pub. Isn't yeah, it? Just that's on the what brawl. it should be. Yeah. yeah. Um, then there's, uh, there's a two by four wrapped in barbed wire introduced into things. Vince is bleeding thanks to Shane. So he's taken to the back by the Stooges. But then he, he's like prime AEW Cody Rhodes because Vince comes back down there like the valiant baby face that he is. And he does the out swerve bro uh, this time because Vince hits the rock upside the head with the chair even oh. though the rock was in his corner which leads to Triple H becoming the first heel in Wrestlemania history to win a Wrestlemania main event that's yeah that's um, uh, I don't know whether it is surprising that it took 16 goes for it to be the heel winning in the main event. I suppose it's not that surprising, really. You always want the big show to end on a happy note. Which they try and do here as well, because it's two chair shots from Vince, which allows Triple H to get the pinfall there, but then it's The Rock comes back and just beats down the heels, and then that's how the show goes off the air. Well, it's a bit of a happy... It's, <sighs> it's kind of, but not really. It's a strange one, because I, I did just say before, like, oh, uh, 2000's a great year for WWE, but this main event's actually one of like the bigger missteps of the year. Yeah. Because I don't think many people remember it that fondly. I don't remember it that fondly. No, nah, me neither. It felt like it should have been what happened the next month the backlash with The Rock beating Triple H one on one and they could have done if Foley wanted to be involved they could have done something else with him elsewhere on the card mm. he could have had like a, a proper I know he would go on to wrestle more in the years to come but he would he could have had a proper like big retirement singles match against someone and, and Big Show could have probably beaten someone else it didn't it felt like the only person this really helped was Triple H <laughs> yeah Mm. And Vince. Yeah, and <laughs> At the Vince, time, and yeah. Vince's character, I should say. Because yeah, yeah. that was the main thing, again, I know it's Attitude Era, so it is the sign of the times, but it was a little bit, a little too many bells and whistles once again, you might say. I would agree. Um, yeah, and I don't know where to put it here, because it feels I, like... I a, think it's lower than 15. It feels like a better match than the two in Bearable. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not a fan of the booking at all. Yeah. Mm. Vince and Shane's bit were funny. Okay. <laughs> Is it all right? Triple H being an arsehole was good. I'm trying to think of all the positives I might lift it up. Yeah. He was starting to really become like a, a more than just a B-plus player. Yeah, it did feel like having Big Show and Mick Foley in there did, did feel a bit inconsequential in terms of how the match panned out. Though. Yeah. I'll, I'll <sighs> go the top of bearable. Top Why not? of bearable? Yeah. Okay, I would agree. I think agree. it's better than the first two in there. I was going to argue. I thought you were going to say all right, and I was going to make an argument for bearable, but you've gone bearable. So I'll we'll, go, we'll bearable. go bearable. Top of, top of bearable. Yeah. It's um, a better match. It's more of a match than the other two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got a WrestleMania 17 now. This might just scrape into all right. I mm -hmm. don't know. Uh, no disqualification made just before the bell. No disqualification. Who made that a thing? Said Jim Ross on, on the <laughs> call. Uh, Steve Austin, of course, defeats The Rock. 28 minutes and 8 seconds. A title change there. The Rock dropping the title here because Steve Austin told us all in the bill, didn't he? He would do anything to win that title back. And he bloody sold his, his soul to the devil, didn't he? He did. Uh, there's so many. Before you talk about what happens in the match... The hype package is the best one ever. Yes. Everyone seems to agree. Um, the the um, the promo work in the build was exceptional. The I'm a drug addict. He didn't quite say that. No, but the yeah, the Austin's character was a really good. Drug of choice is the World Wrestling Federation Championship. And it was um, 
Yeah, I just think it maybe is one of the, it's the best build ever to a WrestleMania main event. One of one yeah. of the best builds ever. As for what happened in the match there, it was more classic Attitude Era stuff. This is obviously a, a lot of people consider this the end of it, don't they? The end yeah, of the yeah. era. Uh, obviously, Austin comes down with a reaction that only maybe the baby Jesus would get. Yes. In many places because he's from that that that, that state of Texas. Uh, blood really added to this match for me both men not just bleeding a little bit they were fully like stuck pigs yeah uh, the pair of them were and obviously to try and redo the wrestlemania 13 sharpshooter spot where the rock uh, reversed the stunner into the hold and the blow both bleeding and whatnot which mm. added to it it's just a proper ding dong battle stone cold steve austin on his podcast a few years ago broke it down from his perspective why they did certain things at what moments and whatnot that's worth a list it's he a can great one it's great isn't he it he can yeah. convey more about this match than i can sat in here with jack in this studio right now he talks about how how much he trusts The Rock and how snug they were able to work because of the trust and stuff like that. But also how they had to protect The Rock's face because he had a film to shoot oh, in the did. aftermath of this yes, WrestleMania, yes. didn't he? Uh, but they still made him bleed and it was fantastic. Mm. Um, obviously, the the thing, because I went back and watched this in full for the first time in a few years, and the thing you notice about Steve Austin is that he does wrestle more like a heel without overtly being a heel, like he's taking the top turnbuckle pad yeah. off and stuff, just being a bit more underhanded. A bit sort desperate of, as well, yeah. seems like desperation. Because that's the thing, it fits the story he was telling yeah. me. He's so desperate that the title back but he is going to be healed by the end uh stunners plural don't get the job done so vince obviously is down there hands off in the chair and then one big chair shot to the head gets a near fall and then from there i think this is one of the best match finishes ever just because it's brutal just, and... not in terms of austin turn and heel but in terms of how it ended because it was just realistic wasn't it just yeah. beat him down he, i think it was 11 chair shots just over and over and over one back to back to back and that's how he won yeah. no stone cold stunner to win the match just a big old chair shot that's what I'm looking for. Stamp Festival, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, it turned out to be disastrous for business to turn Austin heel, and he's talked before about how much he regrets it and wished that he'd then stunned Vince to just kind of... Keep his heely head, well, baby face with an edge. Yeah. Between, yeah. Um, but as a... Taking all like that side out of it, like how much money they must have lost from this decision and everything, as a story, I think it's excellent. Just the story of Austin and how, how he'd do anything, like you say, he said in the build-up, and, and then he did, and he did what everyone thought he would never do. Um, the aftermath didn't work out quite as well, and there was the invasion and all that sort of stuff. But as if this is acting as the end of a certain story or the end of the Attitude Era, I think it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, many people, it's arguably the best WrestleMania main event of all time, not just because they're both great wrestlers, but like you say, because the the action fit the story. Mm -hmm. He was acting all desperate in that, and that's what they alluded to in the build it's best for it's me. gotta be it's the best, best. Yeah. i think would be out of a job if we didn't put it in the best no, people would come to this office and throw things at us <laughs> anyway on a wrestlemania x8 we go the rock defeats hollywood hogan in 16 minutes and 24 seconds hogan of course left hall and nash in the back so he could beat up the rock on his own like a true baby face would do going back and watching sort of like the build of this wrestlemania the dude like there's a lot of like old hulkamania footage used so obviously a lot of people seem to think that like the double turn happened in the match itself and nobody really saw it coming. But I think it was a deliberate ploy by the company. Uh, if you go back and watch, because there was a lot of red and yellow seen in the build while obviously Hogan was part of the NWO in this angle. Okay, so I think this enough. is what they wanted to happen. Well, they still do a good job at least coaxing that reaction out of the crowd then if that's what if it was a if it was a pre-planned thing i still think it's very impressive what yeah. they have to do they apparently like called a lot of the action on the fly in the ring just reacting off the crowd because this is what makes it one of my desert island craps matches this ah. one just because of the crowd you won't get a crowd reaction like this in many other matches ever will we, you we, when's this going out before mania 40 yeah we might see a couple of reactions somewhere in the region this year but we'll have to wait and see which ones the main event of night one yeah and then maybe the main event of night two it'd be that i reckon night two would be the one oh. i know because dwayne's there and he dwayne's to be in the fantastic will be in, dwayne will show up at some point in night two though surely oh yeah unless he's in the hospital after ron's has battered him yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, right so the just to break it down the standoff at the start before they've even done anything and the reaction to get there is spine tingling then they start and hogan does this shove and Jerry Lawler, I know his commentary is much maligned for him being a dirty old perv. Oh. For, but his reaction here for Hogan, when Hogan's doing his flex and whatnot, is absolutely fantastic. What does he do? He just, he's just, he's literally wanking himself silly. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going mad like, at this 50-year-old man just going like that. And the crowd's going wild around. You just can't help but laugh. Like Heenan with Luger. Basically, yeah. But on steroids, it's fantastic. Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> in terms of the magnitude of the yeah, reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. You know, on a different level. Uh, every, every Everybody's cheering everything Hogan does, mm. and eventually we get to the point where everything The Rock does is getting booed. Uh, the pops for the back rakes especially, because again, I went back and watched this match. Back rakes were getting loud pops when Hogan was doing them. Why did, even when he was 
at his baby face ears. Baby face Hogan would always scratch people's backs. <laughs> this strange baby face moves. Certainly asked him. Oh, could you get that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we get to the Hulk up. Well, The Rock's beat him down for a while. Then we get to the Hulk up bit. Once again, Jerry Law on the call. Absolutely fantastic. Then we get the leg drop, which Rock kicks out of. Jim Ross on the call. He beat Andre the Giant with that move. Mm, oh, that's a good call. Oh. Um, Hogan eventually, obviously, does the right thing and he passes the torch to The Rock, who then goes away not too long after this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. <laughs> Obviously, not the greatest match in terms of the action. Obviously, you know, the, the current day wrestlers can all do uh, everything Hogan and Rock do in this match and everything else in the world ever. Hurricane Rana's and all sorts, uh, topes, all that kind of thing. But in terms of just a spectacle, yeah. two, well, the, at the, maybe, well, two of the three biggest stars of like the past 20 years in 2002, yeah. you would say, with The Rock and Hogan there. And Austin was obviously on the card elsewhere. Um, it's just, it's everything, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Um... It's got to go in the best, otherwise I'm going to just kick off. Yeah, it's a great three-star match, obviously. Uh, no, Dave Meltzer did give it three stars, I think. What does he know? <laughs> um, I would agree with you. I, th- I agree with everything you've said. I do think it has to go in the best as well. And I think... We'll find out at the end, Jack. We'll, we'll do, do the, the, the order quick the fire best thing at the end, the end yes. And, and, and I think um, another thing to mention is you mentioned JR's call that it, uh, back to WrestleMania 3. And it's a similar match where everyone says, you know, Hogan Andre's no, nothing compared to Steamboat Savage. But in terms of a spectacle and a story, it absolutely is a, and more. And I think this is a very good, more like a 21st century example of that. Yes. Mm. Look at this analysis here. WrestleMania 19, The Rock then defeats Stone Cold Steve Austin in the third of the trilogy. The Rock's first win in the trilogy, of course. Rock is Hollywood Rock here and his heel work is fantastic when he puts on Austin's vest and starts doing all sorts of his silly bollocks. is absolutely fantastic. Uh, then it's just like they've got 17 finishes stored up on. <laughs> Would it have been just bring it? Or was here that comes the pain out by that WrestleMania? I'm not sure when. What was that when? One of those two games. Or was it shut your mouth? One of those three games. They've got all the finishes stored up and they just start doing finishes to each other. They steal each other's finishes. So they obviously hit the reversal button when one of them try to do their own finisher. Oh, yeah. And then it was just the rock hits three rock bottoms to put Austin away. It's a miracle Steve Austin obviously was in that match because of the uh, high blood blood pressure issues he had the day before WrestleMania. He went to the hospital, didn't he? Yeah, it was a lack of sleep and too many Red Bulls, I think it was, oh. put him in hospital with high blood pressure. He got checked out the hospital a few hours before mm-hmm. <clears throat> WrestleMania started. So the fact he made it through a match like this, it went nearly 18 minutes, is a minor miracle, but I thought it was fantastic. Everyone loves Flair's retirement, WrestleMania 24, and everyone loves Michael's retirement at 26. But even though it wasn't billed as his retirement, and obviously he had the secret message on his jacket, was it one, one more, more round? run? Yeah. OM, OMR. Yeah. Um, I think it's every bit as good as that. I think it's. I really, really like this match. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that it's a great reversal of the story from the previous one, where Austin would do everything to win, but now Rock is desperate to prove that he can actually beat Austin after losing to him twice, uh, and finally does it. Is this the one as well? I think Rock cuts an amazing pre-match promo where he's being all. Hollywood rock and cocky and everything, but then like the mask slips a bit and he goes like, finally, and everyone's waiting for him to say something and he just goes like, finally. And it's all, oh, it's yeah. all poignant. Um, I think it's best here. That's oh, best here. Oh, yes. Without a shadow of a doubt. There we go. It's in there. It's WrestleMania in. 20, where it all begins again. Yeah. A two on three handicap match evolution, which of course was Batista, Randy Orton and Ric Flair, defeats the rock and sock connection of Mick Foley and The Rock in 17 minutes and nine seconds. Speaking of promos there from The Rock, his promo before this match was fantastic. There's legends in the corridor, the superheroes and trainer in the corridor. Mm. It's the one where he opens the doors and shows the fans in the arena. The people. Ah, it was fantastic. It's everything you couldn't expect from a handicap match involving these lads. Some might even and call it Ron Seal. Mm. Well, go on then, Joel, mm. put it in this video, why not? <laughs> From the Cult Holly Wrestling Podcast. Ron Seal does what it says on the tin. It does what it says on the tin. It does. Uh, Cactus was doing his elbow off the apron to the floor on Flair. Uh, the heels then get on top. It was weird for me seeing The Rock have like singles match portions of the match against Batista and Randy Orton. It feels like it's never happened, but yeah. it did, yeah. They have, uh, him and Orton especially have a long stretch in this match, which was just weird to see mm. in hindsight. The spot of the match for me was Ric Flair going for his own people's elbow. He's doing his strut and whatnot. The crowd's laughing. You can hear it. It's fantastic. Then The Rock kips up as Ric Flair's back's turned and it hits a, uh, a spine buster and the people elbow 
people's elbow of his own. It's sports entertainment. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Foley then gets a good hot tag and then eventually gets beaten down and pinned by Randy Orton. Obviously good for Randy Orton back in 2004 because mm -hmm. he was 12 years old. He was 19. And he was 23. Be, that must have been what led to the hardcore match yeah. as well. Ah. I, I, I backlash was just after this, wasn't it? His back did get lashed. Yeah, ah. stabbed. Yeah. Backstab. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, it felt a bit long, maybe. Like when you get into the closing portion of the match, like past Foley's hot tag, maybe it felt like it could have ended yeah. a bit sooner than it did. Uh, Orton getting the big win, as I said, there was a very good positive for me. It just, it had the right mix of like, you know, storyline bollocks and sports entertainment, but also obviously Mick Foley and Evolution having their issues and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I had enough of that in there as well. Yeah, I, I think it's probably, I do agree that it maybe went on a bit too long, but because of the star quality involved and the crowd reaction again and everything, I think it's in lovely. Yeah, I'll go Would with you that. lovely as well? Is it above, what one's that one? Is that 50? Uh, Austin Rock one, yeah. yeah. I would Ooh. put it above it maybe, yeah. but I don't, I don't know. Oh, one's a title match and one's just a mid-card okay yeah well, I'll yeah. put it below it but just below yeah we we'll go. go for that one Wrestlemania 28 once in a lifetime Mm, well, <laughs> uh, The yeah. Rock defeats John Cena in a match, which I didn't realise. Excuse me, I burped there on microphone. Very, <laughs> very unprofessional. Uh, 30 minutes and 35 seconds is, is, is the is? official time for this one. Uh, but this might... Uh, wait, it's not including this, but it felt like more than that because obviously we have a five-minute performance from MGK. Yeah. And then we get John Cena's entrance. This one's for the underdogs, yo. Yeah. John Cena. <laughs> it's a really weird thing to say. <laughs> Especially by that's, 2012. That's before I knew who he was, MGK. Machine Gun Kelly. He was still a rapper at this point not an emo singer getting boshed by Kevin Owens off the off stage thing. on Raw yeah, yeah. then we have a five minutes performance by the old Mr. Wrestlemania Flo Rider yes. and then the Rock's entrance happens uh, it's, it's it's a tough start what do they do <laughs> wild ones I think so yeah I want to shut down the club with yeah. you and you and then that's a main event match here uh, it's all about the atmosphere the spectacle as we say that it's like, like going back to uh, Rock and Hogan in many respects and just in terms of like the start and the standoffs and whatnot. Uh, it delivered in, in what it was in terms of like a showcase main event match for Wrestlemania yeah. uh, the Rock I thought he proved he can still go all the way back in 2012 as we're sat here now mm. but he does notice that he get tired he halfway does. through the match there I always tell screenshots of this match apart because this is the one we've seen as wearing blue shorts mm. and he's obviously wearing like the khaki ones in the rematch I think it's not as good as Hogan Rock even though it's a similar sort of match would you agree yeah yeah but it mainly because of the length and they do get tired down the stretch or Rock definitely does but I still think it probably exceeded a lot of fears at the time like oh how are these how's Rock gonna do and I think he did pretty well he did pretty well it's just that you could see obviously ring rust is a thing and whatnot yeah, but yeah. Cena did a good job of carrying him through that second portion of the match there was lots of near falls if you loved NXT sort of circa 2016 <laughs> to 19 you would love this, this match this is a real black and gold <laughs> NXT match <laughs> uh, so many that Cena eventually accuses the ref of bribery because they were in Miami Oh. Uh, Cena goes for one too many moves uh, and that move being the people's elbow which led him to walk and straight into the rocks uh, the rocks the right he, straight into his bottom he, read, he walked <laughs> he walked straight into the rocks bottom head first <laughs> right up the people's <laughs> arsehole for the loss that uh, would have pushed it up a tier for me <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the weaker of the two rock Cena matches for me but it depends oh, I think it is really I think it is I prefer it oh because the rock gets a definitive injury in the second one but I think it was a better match interesting his, I his, just really, his stomach goes in the second one I like it? the finish of this one because and I like I like because in the second one the thing that takes away from, from me is that you're almost certain that Cena's going to win that one and yeah. get his win back. Whereas this one, genuinely didn't know who was going to win. And and for Cena to lose it because he got cocky, I think it's a good story. Yeah. Um, and it might have backfired in some places, but not in Miami. Mm. Not with The Rock winning in Miami. Where do you think? It's got to be at least lovely, surely. I just was going to say of, yeah. lovely, but I don't know if it's got quite enough to push it into best. Yeah. I'll, I'll put go it lovely. top of lovely, though. Oh, wow. Ooh. I won't go against that one. Okay. It's in there. There we go. Twice in a lifetime, WrestleMania 29 this time, the world. The WWE heavyweight title, I think, is how it was known back then, wasn't it? Was it God, then? Long, God. God, it was so long ago. Whatever, the big gold thing with the logo on. John Cena defeats The Rock this time in 23 minutes, 59 seconds. Is this... So this is your favourite of the two? Yeah. Right. No. I'm getting mixed up. I'll tell you, I'm not awake today. Okay. I've written down there myself, lower than 28. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was about to, I was getting ready to really have an exchange of debates here and say, like, well, why do you prefer 28? Well, yeah, because he got the, the Rock got an abdominal injury in this match, which yeah, completely yeah. buggered the match. So yeah, uh, obviously 28's better. I was Ignore everything you've said for five minutes. <laughs> I was really polite, actually. I think when you said it, I was like, interesting. Can't wait to hear why you think that. Um, this one, it's 
it's not it, it the injury hampers it but i do sometimes wonder even if he'd not got injured i don't know if it would still in my mind have matched up as well as 28 yeah because as you mentioned earlier there and i've got written down in my notes here predictable winner because john <laughs> cena was sticking around and the rock was not especially mm. given the road to wrestlemania that year we've seen a win in the rumble and rock ending punk's massive reign yes they really did foreshadow what was going to happen here oh, yes telegraph sorry that's I, the right word i do wonder if part of why i don't like it is because i'm big CM punk fan boy mm. and this was the mania that should have been his yes but um but even that aside I, I do think that that really it hinders the match and it hindered the rumble as well yeah because once i think the rock punk was the main event of the rumble mm. and once cena had won the rumble well you know that rock's gonna win the, the yeah. main event and i think the rumble came down to cena and ryback and that was a very obvious i can't remember the end of that rumble I, th I feel like ryback might have been the last man out but um either way it, it that run to wrestlemania was a little bit a little bit straightforward for me. Yes, yeah, so it's 15 minutes into the match where The Rock suffers his injury, which not only blighted this match, but also meant that Paramount had to delay the filming of Hercules. Oh, so no. So who are the real losers here? The wrestling fans <laughs> or the Hercules fans? Who knows? Uh, it was pretty much the same as the year prior in terms of structure, but then we get finish and near fall. Finish and near fall. Big move, big move, near fall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> the Rock said apparently, well, not apparently, said in an interview uh, coming out of WrestleMania 29, they were meant to go on for another 10 minutes on top of what we saw if he didn't get injured. And I would argue that just didn't need to happen. So in terms of that, it was a good length, 23 minutes, 59 seconds. Oh, yeah. But yeah, just ignore what I said there for a good five minutes. Spell this was <laughs> worse than 28. I, I was getting mixed up in my head. I would agree that it's, um, I would agree that, um, no, I can't remember what I was going to agree with. No, I would agree that it didn't need that extra, Ten, however much yeah. it would have gone, yeah, if he hadn't got injured. Uh, but I think fair play to him for even, you know, finishing the match and everything, which he would never not have done because wrestlers are silly. Especially of his era. And and in the main event of WrestleMania as well. Um, all right, isn't it? Yes, I was going to say all right as well, which has kind of ruined the nice pattern. Or will it enhance it? Well, oh, I can't even click the... There we go. He's done it. It there we go. looks weird. We go... <laughs> It looks like an E to me. Yeah, Because of the, the night sky in the yeah. background of that second row. Anyway, WrestleMania 32. The Rock defeats Eric Rowan in six seconds. This is the one where The Rock made a shoot shock appearance at WrestleMania. Myself and Jack and Sam were on our way to the toilets at the time. And then we heard, if you smell, and we had to go back to our seats in a very quick fashion. It was like a stampede. And we all wet ourselves in our seats. <laughs> uh, the Rock then speaks for 20 minutes and then tells us how many people are in the arena. He might have told a pork pie about that figure. Maybe. But it's WrestleMania. All these figures are for sports entertainment mm. uh, the Wyatt family then come out to confront the rock and I remember shouting in my seat in that stadium there's three of you attack him attack him this was quite near the end of the show <laughs> and you've been on the big pints the big pint cups I remember um was that that year no not was the year before a uh, year after, sorry. Oh, yeah, I was saying, this one I had a, a, a WrestleMania collector's cup of Sprite because I know I had to go back to the hotel and watch the, all the, the whole show again. Oh, I'm so sorry. Since 33 <laughs> was the one when you were on the lovely pints. Oh, yes. Um, this was still very exciting. I can understand your excitement, uh, even though you wanted the Wyatts to beat him, beat him there down. Was, there were three of them. They were on the apron, just yeah. stood there, and they did nothing. Um, the Wyatt family came out to speak about Rocky Johnson and paying his taxes and stuff like that, and then apparently the IRS... Or Bray might think IRS is really real or IRS thinks he's... Right, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Or whatever happened. Rock bottom, that's all Eric Rowan took and that was it. Uh, Cena then came down for a good old babyface wankathon, given what we've seen the two, well, sorry, a few years previous. Yeah. Uh, that, I don't know what you say about this one. Well, it was a six-second match. Cena's appearance was also unannounced, so that was quite a nice surprise. Yes. Um, the, this is the only Rock match I think either of us have seen live. <laughs> yeah? And... Definitely me. Um, yeah, you as well? Yeah, I can't. Yeah. And I remember thinking, well, even though it wasn't much of a match, at least I've seen the last ever rock match, which now is not true. I'm happy this is not the last rock true, match ever. Yeah, same. This is not a way to end your career. I remember everyone going to the toilet as well because uh, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders had come out and we all went, oh, there's no match coming on. Mm. And his music led to the closest I've ever come to death. Everyone just <laughs> turning around. It's like that, that scene in Tarzan, the animated one, where the elephants are coming through and Tarzan has to <laughs> evade the elephants. Um, uh, but it's it's a six second match. It's one move. They, the Wyatts were made look like a, a set of cucks. So yeah, they were. They were. Um, um, I, I always wonder. I like the moment where he whips off his trackies and he's yeah. got his gear on underneath. That was a good moment. Um, and I think that I always wondered if it was like not decided until the last minute which one of them he was going to face because it felt like quite random that Rowan was the one who got in. But I assume it was to protect Bray. Yeah. So he wasn't taking the pinfall. Um, I don't know what to think of it because. 
it's barely a match, but it was a really fun live moment. Yeah. I don't know how it came across. It didn't translate for the viewers People at home, though, did like it? don't like Mania 32, do they? Oh. Even though for us, it was like a greatest. So many stars. Just All so many shock around. appearances. Yeah. Foley, Austin, yeah. Michael, Cena, Rock. Mm -hmm. That's five big ones there. They're but the when biggest you, ones. When, you, when you're sat at home, I guess that's not going to translate, is it? No, I suppose not. I guess The Rock set his name on fire. That was impressive for everyone to see. Shaq. Shaq was, oh, yeah, was Tatanga. Oh, well, yeah. I remember seeing, I remember getting a Tatanga. He was in the Battle Royal. Royal. Yeah. I remember getting a sense of how big Shaq's trainers were from our seats. I was, look at his trainers. They were all black there. and white, weren't yeah. they? Like a pattern on. And even though Taker Shane wasn't very good, I'll always respect Shane McMahon because he jumped <laughs> off a cell for our entertainment that night. Yeah, yeah. So we had a brilliant time at Main yeah. too, but not many people seem to. This is a bin, isn't it? No, it's all bin. It's a I six second bearable. match. It's bearable. I oh, fine. It was good when you were there live. I liked when he set the sign on fire with his flamethrower as well. Yeah. He set the, was it said The Rock? It just said The Rock, fire. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he comes down and he flirts with one of the cheerleaders. He's like, seen my big muscle yeah. there? That's a great entrance. I think it's got just enough about it to go into bearable. Yeah, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Yes. <laughs> I'm delighted that that's avoided the bin. Said so no Rock matches in the bin. Could this change at WrestleMania 40? Is Surely he, not. Is he an unheralded Mr. WrestleMania? Well, he's got to go behind The weekend. Mm. and Flo Rida Pitbull. and Shawn Michaels and mm. Pitbull, yeah. Uh, so we go down with the best here. Any changes you want to make there? Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know if many people would agree with this, but I would I would, I would, would rather put Rock Austin 3 ahead of Rock Hogan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's your choice. Oh, it's, this is all the You're best, the one who decides yeah, the best, right. yeah. Um, I, I'm happy with that. Rock Austin 2, Rock Austin 3, Rock Hogan. Ooh. Mm. I would go Rock Hogan, the best what it's worth, Ooh, which is really? nothing. Whoa. That's one of my matches, isn't it? That's one of my of Desert Island grapses. Yeah. Uh, that's available on the Cult Holic Wrestling podcast feed. Apologies for getting WrestleMania's 29 and 28 mixed up. It's made for a fun oh, moment in the video, hasn't it? <laughs> Let us know how wrong we are in the comments down below. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is good at the wrestling. Mm. Cheers for watching. Goodbye.